Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you just a handy little tip on how to self-host Google Fonts in WordPress. So you're probably watching this because you ran GT Matrix, you clicked your expires headers and you get flagged. This is because you're not able to add browser caching headers for resources that do not exist on your server. And by default, Google doesn't cache the CSS from the Google Fonts that you're loading because they can change quite regularly. And a certain URL like this one can have a different Unicode range depending on the resources that are necessary for your page to render. Now there's a couple of ways you could do this. There's a plugin called OMGF and I'll cover it in another video, but it does allow you to host your Google fonts locally. The problem with that plugin is you have to manually specify the fonts, the font weights, and you have to go ahead and remove your existing Google font or use a plugin like Perf Matters to remove it. There is another plugin though that I have used with great success in the past for people who have requested this. It's called Self Host to Google Fonts by ASADKN. It hasn't been updated in two years, but I've tested it and ran it on recent websites and it works without a problem. The best part is you don't need to manually DQ or choose the fonts that you want to load. It will get it from your HTML. So you'll click install and then you click activate. Once you do so, you're gonna have to go to the settings panel on the underneath settings and then you'll have to select the self-hosted Google Fonts tab. There's also a giant warning that it gives you an installation. What you need to do is choose enable processing. Make sure that you have disable for admins selected. The reason for this is if you're using Divi, Avada, or really any page builder, Elementor as well, this can lead to breakages if this option is disabled. You can then also select which types of files get processed for the fonts to be extracted from. So you could choose to only take Google fonts that are enqueued. This is what you should probably use for most websites. This is technically the only one that I need on this website because my one Google font is requested in the header and is enqueued by the parent theme to load. But the plugin can also process CSS files. So let's say you added a font, a, the CSS from a font directly into your style sheet. It can process that and download the font files and change them out as well. This would be the situation if you copied the code from a CSS file like this and then pasted it into your main style sheet. You can choose to process inline CSS as well. This does have a slight performance impact, so it's highly recommended you only use this if you have to and if you're using a page caching plugin. Since this site doesn't need it, I'm definitely not going to enable it. And then you can process relative URLs. This will use protocol relative URLs for the generated CSS. My recommendation is that if you have a full SSL on your website, like this site does, you uncheck this option. Once you've done so, you should only need to refresh it and we're going to run it like this, clear the cache, and we're going to enable it for me while logged in solely so that way we can see what happens. So as you can see, the ID is still exactly the same, but now the font that's being loaded is from uploads sgf-css-font.css and it's downloaded the Google Fonts. One thing to keep in mind is that it only downloads the WAF2 and WAF files, so it will give you the most compatibility with modern browsers, but if you're trying to support older browsers like Internet Explorer, you may have backwards compatibility issues. And the good news for you is that Internet Explorer hasn't been really relevant, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you're using a caching plugin like WP Rocket, it can also combine the CSS if you wish, but for most sites, you don't need to do this. So you're gonna go ahead and you're going to let it run. And after the test completes, the expires header warning should disappear altogether. You will no longer get flagged for it. And you'll have the fonts hosted locally. You can combine them into your main style sheet. And you can also use any plugins to modify it, such as um, async CSS. So it'll load the CSS in the footer asynchronously. And you don't have to worry about declaring pre-connect headers for the fonts.gstatic domain anymore. So this will remove the expires headers warning, but we also re will reduce the DNS request count. So as you can see, the expires header warning for the Google font went away. And we also no longer have any requests going out to the fonts.gstatic domain for the Google fonts. 
So that was just a quick tip I thought would be helpful. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.